Hey guys, welcome back to another Zero Linux video. I missed you guys. Yeah, it's so good to be back. Ah, <sighs> it's been a while. I've really wanted to make videos for you guys for so long now. I've been appearing left and right, uh, live left and right on other people's podcasts and interviews and logs and so on and so forth. But I haven't had the chance to make new videos on this channel for quite a long time. Oh, well, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Anyway, for starters, uh, for starters, this video is going to be a very interesting one. But before we get there, don't forget to like the video. Subscribe if you aren't subscribed. And ring the bell to get notified of any new videos I put out for you guys. Without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome to a fresh Arch install with KDE. Of course it's going to be KDE. What do you think? I'm the KDE fanboy here. So naturally, it's going to be KDE Plasma. As, as you can see, it's KDE 6. Plasma 6 with framework 6.0, Qt version 6.6.2, and I'm on X11. And this is Vanilla Arch, not Zero Linux. Now, before I get into the toolkit, I need to mention who is my target audience for it. My target audience for this toolkit is you uh, are users who are willing to learn and with enough Linux knowledge to get by in the terminal because my toolkit is a CLI. It's a terminal application. So if you don't feel comfortable in the terminal, prefer GUIs, graphical user interfaces, or you don't feel comfortable yet on Linux, don't use Arch Linux. Just please, whatever you do, don't use Arch Linux. It's not for everyone. Keep that in mind. You have to have a certain type, uh, a certain amount of knowledge with Linux before you attack anything based on Arch. Because let's face it, no matter what coat, coat of paint this Arch distro, uh, custom Arch distro has, and no matter how much they tell you they're going to hold your hands, you're going to end up at some point or other having to troubleshoot an issue you are, you are facing yourself. If you're not comfortable on Linux, you won't be able to do that. That's, that's, uh, this, is the, this is what I'm going to say about this subject. Before we attack anything, head on over to zerolinux.xyz where you'll be able to get started. So as the website says, Zero Linux, I call it Zero Linux Post Install Toolkit, the ultimate Arch Linux tool, a CLI toolkit that will make setting up Arch a breeze. So all you have to do is use the command below. But before that, read this. Use at own risk. Not intended for custom Arch-based distros. Why? Simple. Custom Arch-based distros do things their way. So that might cause issues on the long run with my toolkit. Some conflicts here and there. This is intended for vanilla Arch. Whatever the desktop environment, it will work as long as it's vanilla Arch. Why did I create this toolkit? I created this toolkit because I wanted to put all the knowledge that I gained while maintaining Zero Linux in one place. So basically, it became a toolkit. And this is also uh, for all of these, all of you guys out there who want to get up and running very fast. You don't want to waste time having to look how to do this, 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 and that. This is a toolkit that will help you begin your journey on Arch Linux. It is not here to do everything for you. It will never do everything for you. It's never meant to hold your hand. If you want hand, if you want hand holding, there's a lot of distros out there. You will definitely find a distro that suits your needs best. Okay, let's get into it. So first things first, you click on this. So the command is copied to your clipboard. You hit paste and then you hit enter. What will this do? Okay, this will launch a script that will try to see if you have an AUR helper already installed because it, it's required. It's a must. Without it, the toolkit will work at 50% capacity. You choose whichever one you want. I recommend Paru, as I say here, it's fast, it's built with Rust, it works better than Yay. Yay works, but it's kind of slow and getting old in age. So we're going to select Paru, 
and this will inject my repository and enable multi-rip repository, which is definitely required for drivers and Steam and so on and so forth. It will do those. Then it will install all the dependencies and, of course, the AUR helper that you chose and launch it. There you go. You type your password and it will be transparent. We'll show you what it's doing. So as you can see, multi-lib and zero Linux repositories have been enabled. And now it's going to install all everything that is required for the toolkit to run. All right, the toolkit has been launched. The first thing you need to do is select option one, system setup. I'm just going to quickly go through what these various options do. First, Pipewire Bluetooth, because as we all know, Arch install does not, for whatever reason, uh, install all the Bluetooth packages, nor does it enable Bluetooth. So if you're having any Bluetooth issues, this is the option for you. Also, pipe, they install the very minimum Pipewire packages for better performance and functionality. You, uh, this will do everything for, uh, it will install the missing packages. Activate set Pacman parallel downloads to 10. Yes, because the Arch install hides the parallel downloads behind the advanced flag. And I'm going to have a video uh, about Arch install very soon, going over a few details that you need to know about. Activate FlatHub repositories. Of course, if you want to install OBS and other flat packs, you need this activated. Make sure to reboot once uh, you activate it. Enable fast multi-thread package compilation. If you, if you want to install a, lo uh, a lot of AUR packages and you want them to uh, compile quickly because installing from the AUR is not as simple as installing regular packages. It will have to compile them. If you wanted to, if you have a beefy CPU and you want it to go quickly, you enable that option. And finally, in this section, install third-party GUI package managers like Pamac, like Octopi, so on and so forth. You have a lot of choices. Just select one or multiple ones or all of them, if you're crazy enough. <laughs> all right, you hit Q to go back. Option two, which is very important, the driver section. Okay, option one, you hit G to, uh, to run it, but this is not going to do anything for you. It's just going to open a website. It's going to open the thread on my forum that will teach you, show you how to install, what to install for your GPU drivers and what you need to do for, for the various scenarios. I couldn't put that into script form, it's impossible to cover all scenarios. So I was like, yeah, better put it in written form. And that way you, get, you can get your hands dirty into your system. That way you learn more. It's awesome to learn. This is why I love Arch so much. So as you, as you saw, it will open a thread on my forum that you need to follow for your, for your setup. Depending on your setup, you follow everything. All right, for option two, printer drivers and tools. Well, this will not install drivers per se. This will install just the necessary stuff to get you up and running. For drivers, you'll have to head on over to, to the AUR, pick and choose which one you need for your specific model. I cannot include all of them. Otherwise, it would have made the, the script way more complex. You have to get your hands dirty. This is your system. You need to know how it works, how it's built, because you are doing everything from the ground up. Samba tools, if you have a window, Windows machine and you want to share files, you know what Samba, I don't need to explain that. Scanner, it will do this, install the necessary stuff and services, start the necessary services for uh, scanners to work. But for drivers, head on over to Arch repositories or the AUR, up to you to find the right driver for your system. Game controller drivers, of course, if you have a PS4 controller, PS5 controller, or Xbox One controller, you, uh, this will install the drivers, but it, uh, after installing the driver, it will open the wiki for the one you selected, and then you go through what you need to do after installing the driver, because sometimes installing the driver is only is not enough. Decklink and Stream Deck drivers and tools, it will install them, but to configure them, you'll have to follow what is said on the wiki. Get your hands dirty. I'm not going to do everything for you. This is just a quick start. You to go back. Distrobox and Docker, this is a bit too complex for this video. Just suffice it to say it will install either Distrobox and Docker or both. So you can install various uh, images like Fedora, like Gentoo, whatever. This is for developers. So if you're not a developer, forget about that. System customization. 
this is a few nits and crannies of what's left over of my customization days. It will allow you to install the fish shell, stock fish shell. It's not going to install anything with it. If you're a fish, uh, fish lover, there you go. For those of us who love ZSH, it will install ZSH plus oh my ZSH plus power level 10K. That's it. Zero KDE rice, the only rice that's left, my signature rice, the lay in rice. But currently, if you select it, it's just going to tell you KDE rice is currently, currently unavailable because the theme, lay in, the underlying theme, lay in by Vinci Luce hasn't been updated uh, to work on Plasma 6. Or as you guys say, it hasn't been ported to Plasma 6 yet. Not fully. It works, but with a lot of problems. That's why I kept it disabled. It, I will enable it once it's completely ported over. As for Hyperland dot files, if you selected Hyperland to install Hyperland from Arch install, if you select this one, you have a choice from the top three that I consider the best three Hyperland rices. My Linux forward, uh, Jakulit, and Prasant. Selecting whichever one will open, will take you to their, or straight to their GitHub, where you'll be able to follow the guides to, to get their rices up and running. With that being said, go back. Game launchers, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. It will allow you to install Steam, Lutris, Heroic, Bottles, and as you can see on the screen, the rest. I'm just going to say one thing. For Lutris, Heroic, Bottles, Proton Up QT, it's going to offer either the native or the flat pack. The native being the unofficial package and the flat pack being the official package. If you select the native one, don't expect uh, the developers to provide any support. They only provide support for the official packages that, ha in this case, happen to be the flatback version. Six, recommended packages. This is uh, self-explanatory. By the way, I forgot to, uh, to mention a very important option. You see at the top where it says, hello, this will install extra packages. Press I for the wiki. Every section has this option, I for the wiki. Whenever you hit I, it's going to take you to, this, to, to the part of the wiki relevant to that section. Uh, you hit I, it's going to open it to essential packages section, recommended package. See, option 10, extra plasma packages. That is the, uh, the part that I needed to mention. Since Arch install, when you select plasma, for example, it will not install everything. It will install as per the Arch wiki, uh, the KDE guidelines. Yeah, KDE guys have guidelines. I don't know why. So Arch install follows these guidelines. So as a result, it will install the strict minimum. So you will end up without Spectacle, Dolphin plugins, a lot of missing packages, Flatpak, KCM. So if you want to add them yourself after the fact, just select option 10. And those are groups. So if you select whatever group, I'm going to select KDE graphics in this uh, scenario. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit OK. You type your password. And he, see, it's going to show you everything that's available in that group. You select only the, the things you want. If you want to install everything, you just hit enter and forget about it. But I don't, I don't recommend that. You end up with a bloated system. So just select whatever you want from here. Like for me, I need, for example, three, Gwenview and Spectacle. Because as I said earlier, there is no Spectacle if you install with via the Arch install. Hit enter, hit enter again and it's going to install all the dependencies plus the two packages you select. And you, you, uh, the, uh, you can do this for all groups. If you want everything, just select everything in the list and just hit enter, 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 and get everything installed. Again, not recommended unless you want a bloated system. Okay, done with this section. Final section is the fixes and tweaks. Re, uh, for option one, recently MK init CPIO received a major overhaul, which, require, uh, which requires the microcode module to be inserted into MK in CPIU module section. So all you have to do is select one. It's going to detect your uh, CPU, install the necessary microcode in case it's not installed, and inject the missing module into MK in its CPIO. And I need to thank Eric Dubois from Arco Linux for, for this. He's the one who created the script. I just implemented it into my toolkit. Uh, option two, install and activate Firewall D, self-explanatory. Clear Pac-Man cache, of course, to free up space. Restart Pipewire in case you're having issues with Pipewire. Unlock Pac-Man DB in case your system got stuck, uh, rebooted during an update. You can unlock the database. Activate V4L2 loopback for OBS virtual cam. Of course, if you use virtual cam on OBS as I'm doing right now, um, 
as I'm as I usually do on Discord, this is a way to do it. Activate Flatpak theming. Uh, this will activate Flatpak theming, so you, uh, Flatpaks use your system, whatever system theme you're using. But keep in mind, you have to have uh, install. You have to have your themes in your home directory in dot themes or in dot local share themes. If you have them in user share themes, this will not work. If you installed your theme from the AUR, it will not work. Uh, activate OS Prober in case uh, of dual booting. Yes, you need OS Prober. Arch install does not come with it. Or, uh, Arch install does not enable it. This will do everything that's required. Install and activate Power Demon for laptops, desktops. Uh, this is uh, this will allow you to modify your CPU scheduler and stuff. I'm not into that, so I don't use it. If you want to use it, have a laptop. Have fun. Finally, the two last options. Update Arch Mirror List for faster download speeds. Well, of course, sometimes mirrors can be slow. So this is an option that will get the nearest ones to you so you have a better experience. Fix Arch GNU BG keyring, the infamous keyring issue with Arch. This is a way to fix it. This will fix it right up in a GIF. All right, I am done. This is everything. I hope you enjoy enjoy my toolkit it will continuously grow and i will add useful features to it as i go if you want to request anything hit me up on discord link in the description or you will it's going to be linked on github if you have if you are having issues with the toolkit of course head on over to the github go to issues raise an issue and i'll get to it as fast as possible to to keep the toolkit functioning in a perfect state all right Hey, if you have reached the, uh, the end of the video, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and if you want to support the project, every little bit helps. I'll have links to how you can do that in the description below, be it on Ko-Fi, Fundraiser, or by becoming a GitHub uh, sponsor, or by, beco uh, by, uh, by becoming a channel member, you get access to videos before anyone else plus any other perks I might add in the future. I guess there's nothing else to be said. Try the toolkit out. Have fun. Keep contributing to Linux. Love you all. Peace out. I'll see you in the next one.